In this video, I'll go over the bridge encounter within the Destiny 2 Crota Ends raid. So this can be a challenging encounter, especially if you're paying on what we were doing, which was on contest mode or in the future be master mode. So this can be a pretty challenging encounter, but even without that, there's a lot of mechanics. Let me get into those. So first off, I want to go over some of the basic mechanics that you'll be going through in this and several other encounters. And that is around the Chalice of Light. So the Chalice of Light is something that you you basically build up over time and you can do it quicker by getting kills from enemies. Once it's up to max, you'll have 10 seconds where you get engulfed in light and if someone doesn't pick it up, you die. Once they pick that up from you, you have the enlightenment buff, which allows you to do several things within the raid. And then the person who has the chalice again can do the same thing and you can basically pass that through the fire team. For this particular encounter, the enlightenment lets you do several things. First off, it allows you to build the bridge. You can use this to build a bridge. You have to do this three times to actually build the bridge up. You also use this to pick up swords from sword bearers. So team composition de probably depends on where you're paying this, a normal master. You can split into three groups of two. Um, for the method, I'm gonna tell you that um, I think is e an easy way to do it. You potentially wanna do four people in the middle and one person on each plate because there are three plates that you have to hold to keep the bridge open and also to make sure annihilator totems do not kill the fire team. So there's right, middle, and left. Also, there are anti-berry champions in this encounter, so make sure you're prepared for those. So to start off, have one person go to right, have one person go to left, have the person who's going to be the first sword bearer go up and pick the chalice up. So they're going to go around and be a floater for now. They're going to kill things and wait for the chalice to kind of level up. Once it gets leveled up, then they are going to exchange it and get the enlightenment buff. At that point, that person's only job at this point is to basically go around and help kill things until a sword bearer shows up. The sword bearer will not show up until you actually start building the bridge. Once you have enough enlightenment in the bridge, the bridge will start building. And again, you hold it by throw, holding the three plates. A sword bearer will show up. With that sword bearer, you kill the sword bearer. And again, the person of enlightenment can pick that sword up. The sword is infinite. It doesn't have a cooldown. It doesn't have a limit on ammo. However, you cannot do anything else. You can throw grenades and you can use abilities like if you're on a hunter and you will go invisible by doing the dive. You can do things like that but you can't use supers, you can't fire weapons, you're kind of stuck on what you can do. For our fire team to make this really simple, what we did is we made sure that, um, especially because it's on contest mode, it might be easier once it's off contest mode, but during contest mode, what we did is we wanted to make sure there were two people that went over initially because the gatekeeper that's on the other side is gonna be a little bit chonky and you wanna make sure you can deal with that. To get prepared for that, what we actually did is we pay kept passing the buffs and make sure everyone's enlightened. The reason is at some point, Everyone's going to go, have to go across and is going to have to bring a sword with them. There are five swords that need to be brought across. So you only need five people to do that. The other person can use the chalice because the chalice will allow you to get back and forth on the bridge. If you don't have the chalice, you can't go back and forth. If you don't have a sword, you can't go to the other side. So at that point, the sword bearer just helped everyone out and then everyone else got enlightened. When the last person had the chalice, meaning that they're not enlightened at that point, but they have the chalice. That person and the sword bearer went across the bridge. And this is a great strategy that DK from my clan came up with, which I really appreciate because we were struggling during contest mode and he did a great job coming up with this. We made sure that the person coming across had either a well or a tractor or both, right? To help out with blowing down the gatekeeper, but also protecting us because there will be ads and the gatekeeper around. Initially, that person, since we had all the other enlightenments done, took the chalice and put the chalice into the resting area on the far side. Now, there's some issues with the strategy if you're not good with it. If someone dies on the side, that does mean that someone's got to pick up the chalice, go all the way back across the bridge to give them the enlightenment buff so again, they can pick up a sword. But assuming that doesn't happen, at that point, you put that in, you put the well or you use a tractor or whatever with the other person that's on the other side helping with ads, the person's sword will take down the gatekeeper. Then you put that sword into a hole and there'll be a little area that says you know basically put the sword in there and then at that point that sword is complete the two people on that side then stay over there and basically kill ads right try to stay alive a third person since everyone on the other side is already enlightened a third person another sword bearer will come out you kill the sword bearer you pick up the sword you come across right pretty simple the two people will try to help that person kill that gatekeeper and then at that point you have three people on the other side because you have three people on the other side, those people can now hold their three plates and the people who are on the beginning side 
can get off of their plates because their their job is going to be a little bit div more difficult because there's more ads and more things they have to deal with including taking the sword bears down one other thing to keep in mind is that once you take those plates the bear champions that were on the other side will not spawn on this side so the people who are on this on the far plates are going to also have to deal with barrier champions while they're dealing with everything else. So at that point, just continue on. Keep having people get the swords and going across. The trick that's going to happen is getting that last person across because it will be difficult. You can use long range weapons to help them out. You can use throwing grenades across there. But again, their only goal is, especially you could have them be invisible. That might be a good way. Again, it just depends on your play style and what you want to do. But their whole goal is just to make sure that lightning buff, they get that sword. At that point, they can just hightail it and get across. And at that point, you have all the swords across. Once you go through that, you're going to notice a couple of things happen. You're going to have wizards that show up that you have to deal with. You're going to have ogres that show up and they can be extremely painful that you have to deal with. Okay. So kill all that stuff, continue to advance the encounter. Towards the end, you're gonna show gatekeepers that show up again. So the gatekeepers can only be taken on the bottom of the sword. So while you're going through this, someone should have picked up the buff, the chalice, and start exchanging again as you're dealing with all this. So again, a lot going on. Get that enlightenment buff, and with that enlightenment buff, you can pick up swords. So have that first person do it. Hopefully you've started to get a few of those so you can deal with this in time. But if you haven't, you need to hurry up and do it. Again, you don't have a time limit, but those things can start to uh, beat you up. So you'll probably at that point, if you are having issues, start using things like strand or stasis or maybe a tether to kind of try to hold those things in place as well as you can. So continue to pass around the chalice, continue to get swords from the enlightenment buff, continue to kill them. And then at that point, at the very end, you need to take the chalice and put it back into the perch on the far side. And that's the encounter. So again, a lot going on compared to D1. This used to be, a, even though it was one of the more interesting encounters in the raid, it was also a lot simpler than this. So a lot going on, a lot of call outs. You can use a different method. Some people talked about potentially having the last sword bearer and the chalice person run across. So you at least have two people protecting you. But we found this as long as you have a really good player who can kind of, you know, either stay invisible or stay protected, even go, I'll show you this one um, screenshot where a person actually stood up at the very stop of the stairs where there are no ads spawning. Again, just use whatever strategy, but that is really the key to this encounter. And that's the video, guys. If you like it, if you ever liked the video, subscribe to my channel, jump my Discord, and I'll see you guardians in the tower.